श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम वेन वी स्टार्टेड अवर जर्नी फ्रॉम Vienna. So, what we needed was, what is the destination? So, in any journey, there are two points. Why don't you sit there in that chair, comfortable? Because you are hiding and sleeping. Ah, now you can't sleep. so um any journey needs two points point of origin and the destination once i was talking to wise people like you all and kamini uh, we have got a question i said before that i have got a question and then i asked them journey is happiness or destination is happiness so those who think journey is happiness raise your hands so few of them raise and those who say destination is happiness they raise their hands i say so you know so my satsang is over they say no 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 you tell <laughs> i say look here neither journey is happiness nor the destination is happiness then company is happiness company is happiness now which is the company that we have in our life prakriti or purusha prakriti is that where vikruti modifications and problems are inherent okay. and purusha is that which is supporting all of them but not getting influenced by any one of them so which is our company in this journey what we call spirituality which is our company e friends therefore in this journey we have to know very clearly that it is not a journey wherein we cross distances it is not a journey which takes time like we started from there and to come here it took almost 4 hours 4 hours and uh, is this the journey from where we are to what we are ne from where we are and what we are to who we are we all know what we are i am man i am woman i am rich i am poor i am married i am happy do you know this thing in uh, england it happened recently i spoke somewhere um after my retreat for 2 3 days in heathrow it happened very beautiful place it was so one elderly gentleman a britisher he asked me this question mr swami you people from india don't get married i kept quiet he continued after all happiness is not everything in life that day i discovered this world is made up of two people those who are married and those who are happy 
So, whose company we are seeking in life and what is the GPS map, what are the stations which come, whether there is McDonald or Starbucks or Subway, what are the gas stations that come, 7-Eleven, all these things should be clear. So keeping this much introduction, now let us start where we are to what we are and from where what we are to who we are. What is this point? So where we are, we are in the world which is uh, three factors. If we are to define the world, only three factors time, space, and object. Only these three things. Spiritual life is to take care of these three things. The world is a matrix of three by three. Okay. So, where we are, we are in the objects. Since how long time and where space? Time, space and object. So, grossest among these three parameters is the object. Objects are gross. They can be defined. They can be spoken of. They can be evaluated. They can be um, commented upon. And they have got five qualities. Okay. Sound, touch, form, taste and smell. These are the only five objects where we are presently living. Okay. It should be calm and quiet, not noisy place. See, this place is so beautiful. Calm and quiet. Shabda sound. Sparsha is very comfortable. Shabdas Rupa, it is so beautiful, all greenery around, no mess. Everything in this house is well placed, properly designed. The color combination is very pleasing to the eyes. Third object, Shabdas Parasha Rupa, then Rasa. I am hopeful that we are going to get good food. I have come here only for eating, there is no other purpose. <laughs> if I can survive without eating food, I will stop talking. <laughs> and uh, last is Gandha, the smell. So these are the five objects where our whole life is spent. Now we will take only one, then you can multiply it in your mind. One object. Color and form, Roop Ranga. Okay. Be very attentive. This journey should be clear. Roop Ranga, colors and forms are plenty. But they are existing only if there is a vision. For a blind person, there are no colors, no forms, no problems. So what should we do? Should we destroy our eyes? No. Only live intelligently, not intellectually. You know the difference between intelligent and intellectuals? Intellectuals are intelligently miserable. And intelligent people are never miserable. They make others miserable. 
<laughs> See? So, these colors and forms are plenty. There is no end to it. When I see the red color, the same vision is required. When I see the green color, the same vision works. When I see the pink color, the same vision works. So, colors and forms are many, but that by which we gather this knowledge is only one, the vision. See, the colors and forms have got variety. Vision is only one. There is no, when I see the red color, my vision doesn't become red. When the vision sees the blue color, it doesn't become blue. When you say pink color, it doesn't become pink. See? Then, forms. When I see a, a round form, the vision doesn't become round. When I see elongated one, the vision doesn't become elongated. When it is a square, it doesn't become square. When it is a triangular, it doesn't become triangular. In short, colors and forms have variety, but that which is establishing the existence of them is one and which has neither the color nor the form. So if I want to be happy, what I have to do? I have to devalue the varieties of colors and forms. Come back and live in your own vision. Now what happens? I don't like red color. Yes. I like blue color. So what will I do? I start running away from the red and run towards the blue. My whole life will be only run or run. What I like, I run towards and what I don't like, I run away. And in that running, I get tired. So what is the wise man's approach? Only understand this thing. That because we have given importance to something, that is the culprit that makes our life miserable. Only recognize this. Nothing to do. Only recognize this. That vision is the cause and colors and forms are the effect. Vision is or the cause is one and effects are many. The effects are subject to modifications, but the cause remains the same. The effects are dependent on the cause, but cause is independent of the vision, of the objects. In short, when we take this first step, that the colors and forms should not be given undue importance to disturb our vision. Now apply this principle to all the five objects. See? One uh, sense organ he is the most troublesome for everyone and that is our tongue. It is two in one. When it is used for testing, in English there is no comparative word. When it is used for testing, it is called rasana. That by which we test is rasana. And that by which we speak, now I am speaking to you. That time rasana is not used. Jiva is used. So the tongue is Jiva, a talking organ is organ of action. And the same tongue used for testing, it is an organ of perception. The first step on this journey will be get away from the objective world, come back to your own sense organs. Now, how it can be done? There is only one simple technique. Learn and understand. And naturally, it will start practice. When 
my vision is not influenced by any color why should i worry about what color it is when the vision is not influenced by any shape why should i worry about any particular shape in short we devalue all that to which we have given value three friends so out of these two changing one prakriti and unchanging purusha so in this example object shabda sparsha roop rasaganda they fall in the purview of the prakriti constantly changing prakriti is where vikruti is natural we cannot stop many oldies like all of us not you many oldies they have this arrogance see these days youngsters don't respect the old people now tell me what is our contribution that we are growing old what we have done if you have studied yes you have put some efforts but you are growing old what is our contribution it is poor earth running around the sun and our age is growing and what an arrogance about it therefore this is the basic rule if we live at the prakriti level we are bound to suffer so what will be the spiritual practice rise above the prakriti and come to the purusha that you are so the first step will be undue importance and influence to the objective world has to be devalued my friends net result will be we have started our journey from where we are in the world to what we are first we have come back to the sense organs now what will happen if somebody tells us now we take the other sense organ for understanding if somebody tells you that um, i'll give one event is more effective to understand we were somewhere in new zealand and i was going with my friend and his daughter three of us and that daughter is about 20 18 like that age teenage when we are going she says sanji let us go to the sea we are at the top is so beautiful see how nice it looks i said hey come on you go i'll watch from here i am lazy i cannot go down you know all wise people are lazy so i said i will not doubt <laughs> <laughs> so i um, told you go ahead no swami ji it looks so beautiful i said do you know the principle what looks beautiful is never beautiful what do you mean she asked me question i said for example you look beautiful <laughs> from that moment onward next 3 days she was on strike not talking to me <laughs> See? because we have some concept this is good this is bad and this is beautiful this is awful all our concepts so we rise above these unwanted garbage that we have collected in our life see therefore if somebody tells hey you are this is typical american hey you are very intelligent no no samajh no, no. no i was just joking <laughs> you are dumb <laughs> therefore when the world does not influence us in any way we have really started our journey we leave the world we have come back to our faculties now second thing our faculties must be under control see and again of all the faculties which is the most dangerous faculty our tongue i am a great glutton 
I like good and tasty food. But when the food is horrible, now I being a Swami, I cannot say the food is bad. See, like if you take a Gujarati food. In Gujarati food, there is no taste. No mirch, no masala, only boiled dhokla and all kinds of things, you know. Then, what do I do? I have to tell, oh, the food is very sattvic. Sattvic means no taste. <laughs> So, I want all the time, mirch, masala, chatti, acha, aha, then I can enjoy the food, you know. Last night, we went somewhere for dinner, somebody's house, and uh, they have ordered in a, a Hindu temple, and their uh, cook is a very good one, and it because we are so many of us, the food was brought. When I was taking that food, I really enjoyed till the last bite, because it was really good. Then I told, I said, you know, this food is from some uh, professional uh, cook. Yes, Swamiji. I said, ah, that is why it is so good. Had it been your cooking, then I had to tell it is good. <laughs> see, see, friends. So, we are the slave of our tongue. I want this food, I don't want that food. Number one. Second, we are the slave of our own tongue. Now, what is that slavery? Talking. You know, this mantra, it was in Hindi. You must not have understood. I'll tell you in English the meaning. One of the mantra was, Dekho, suno, mat bolo, see, hear, don't comment. So we started from the objective world, came to the sense organs. We are in the sense organ, the tongue, both two in one. In that, give minimum choice to the food. Minimum choice. Like I go to China, Japan and all these places. So, my Indian friends, they ask, Samiji, you go to China, what about food? I said, I don't go there to take food. I go there for my talks. Food is the secondary thing. But all the time, only food, food, food. Therefore, if we give minimum choice to ourselves as regard food is concerned, you will be walking spiritual path. See? Adjust, adapt, compromise, time pass, that's it. Don't become serious about food. Then the second thing. Never overdo with reference to food. There are many people, they observe too much of fast. One day, two days, three days, four days fast. Don't do all that rubbish. My rule, I tell you, try that. Keep the stomach full and head empty. <laughs> Normally, what the people do, they keep the stomach empty and head full of food. What should I eat? You know, <laughs> eat three times a day. Every time, little. Bhagavad Gita tells, Yukta hara viharasya, Yukta cheshtasya karmasu, Yukta svapnava bodhasya, Yogo hoti dukkha. See, we must have a balance. How much we do exercise, how much we take rest, how much we talk, how much we keep quiet, how much we eat, how much we don't eat. A perfect balance. When the food is very good, we keep on eating up to nose. Samiji, how was the food? Mm. Really it was good? Mm. Why the Swami is not talking? Then they ask, uh, Swamiji, uh, what did you eat? No, I had to talk. Then I open my mouth, take out the jelly bean and show. Uh, eating up to the nose? No, eat three times a day, every time, keep stomach one quarter empty. According to Yoga Shastra, your total hunger, 50% food, 25% water and 25% space for ventilation. Then only we are eating food according to yoga. 
Otherwise, after every food, the same comment, today I think I have taken more, every time the same thing. No. So first is our tongue. Second is talking. We have to talk on something or the other. See, friends, this is one of the highest spiritual practice. Now, why it is highest? Be attentive. I am taking you nearer to yourself. We are reaching the destination shortly. See. In, you are all the yoga student, Patanjali Yoga Darshan. And there, um, the yoga is defined as, you know, yoga ha chitta vritti nirodaha. Suspension of thought formation is yoga. Now, what is a thought? What do we mean by thought? Is thought like a Bluetooth uh, mouse on the table? So, a thought on the mind? Is it like that? What is the thought? We simply talk about Chitta Vritti means thought. Suspension of thought formation is yoga. You ask any yogi sincerely, let him or her tell that I have 100% suspension of thoughts. Impossible. It is something like trying to collect the spilled mercury on a um, smooth floor by your hands. Try. You cannot. Thoughts can be suspended only through wisdom, not mechanically. See, friends, be attentive. Like objects are the effects, sense organs are the cause. Similarly, Mind is the cause and the words are the effects. So, if you want to suspend the thought formation, the first technique is see, hear, no comment. Because what is comment? Comments are words. The next step, be attentive. Try to think anything you like, but one condition. Don't use any words to think. Think, but don't use any words. You cannot think. Simply telling Chitta Vritti Nirodha will not help. Then work on this platform. Do not talk to yourself. See what happened. Mind expresses as words. Eyes expresses, rather water expresses as eyes. Before coming here, I was in Alaska. We went to see where the glaciers merge in the ocean. And the small pieces come out. So I was watching on the boat. Always there are people questionable. Swamiji, what are you seeing? I say, you tell me what I am seeing. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I said, that's what you are seeing. I am not seeing that. What are you seeing? I say, you try to understand. Swamiji, difficult to understand you. I said, okay, I'll tell you. 
I am seeing cause and effect. Now, why you bring cause and effect here? I said water is the cause, ice is the effect. See? And when the ice dissolves, does it go anywhere? When the ice is formed, has it come from anywhere? So the same water is called as ice as well as the water. In the same manner, mind in place of the water and words in place of the ice. Talk to others when required, but don't talk to yourself. And this yoga practice can be practiced anytime, anywhere, without any yoga mattress. Anywhere. I have named this yoga my own way. I call this as a commode yoga. Sit on the commode in the morning and till the job is done, don't talk to yourself. See what happens. When we don't talk to ourselves, we don't want to talk to others also. But that doesn't mean we go to sleep. Because sleep is also a thought. You all have studied Patanjali. There, what is sleep according to Patanjali Marchi? Sleep is uh, Abhava Pratyaya Lambana Vrittihi Nidra, where absence is an object of knowledge, is a thought. The sleep is also a thought according to Patanjali. So, this experience is neither the waking experience reacting to the nature or the world, nor it is a dream experience which is imaginary projections, nor it is a deep sleep experience where absence of the waking and dream is the criteria, but it is the trans three experiences. Neither waking, nor dream, nor deep sleep. In other words, the mind has three qualities. One is, it is quiet, but not sleepy. You must have seen it. When they sit for meditation together, I didn't know that. Somebody asked me. Then I came to know about it. At uh, Pamiji, when some people sit for meditation in our uh, ashram, they do like this in between. What is that? I say it is a jatka meditation. They get a kick. It is a sleep, man, sleep. We have trained our mind to go to sleep the moment it is quiet. Quiet, non sleeping mind. Quite non-reactionary mind, quite effortless mind, quite alert mind. All these attributes of the mind is defined by one word as pure consciousness. So again, let us come back. Objects are effects, sense organs are cause. 
sense organs are effects, mind is the cause. We have got five sense organs. Are there five minds? There are five colors. Are there five visions? Vision is only one. Colors may be five. Sense organs may be five. Behind them, mind is one. So when electricity flows through the bulb, it comes out as a light. When the same electricity goes through the fan, it comes out as a movement. When the same electricity goes through the heater, it comes out as the heat. Does it mean there are three electricities? No, one. Differences are because what is fixed to the electricity. In the same manner, mind is one. To that mind, when eyes are fixed, it is called as vision. What you and me see, these are not eyes. These are structural eyes. Vision is different. Vision is functional eye. See? So, objects are effects, sense organs are cause. Sense organs are effects, mind is cause. Effects are many, cause is one. So we have come to this one mind. And after having come to this one mind, again, thoughts are many. Freedom from thoughts is one. In other words, thought-free mind is consciousness. If thought-free mind leads to sleep, then it is still a mind. Then the mind has dissolved in prakriti, in matter. But when the mind doesn't dissolve in matter, it goes back to pure consciousness. And this is not difficult at all. Only thing, we have to be convinced of this. All that is required on the spiritual path is, are we convinced of what we are doing or not doing? Or is it a mechanical thing? Because others are doing, we also do. On the contrary, I come to the final conclusion in my life. All spiritual practice is undoing and unbecoming. So, undoing meditation. Don't do meditation. I am telling you from my experience. I have gone through all the uh, acrobatics. Useless. What for meditation? Because everybody is doing. And what is meditation? Oh, I can sit in one posture for 20 minutes. What is great about it? Our Indian buffaloes can sit for 8 hours. <laughs> without moving. If one mosquito comes, we get disturbed in meditation. There a truck comes in front of the buffalo. She looks at him, so what? <laughs> See, let us not be physical, my friends. Rise above that physicality. And come to wisdom. And the wisdom is, you are safe. Na kuch pana, na kuch khona. Nothing to gain, nothing to lose. When we go to sleep, my friends, what do we gain? Money? Family? Property? Noble price? Nothing we gain. And what do we lose? Nothing. When we come to this equation, nothing to gain, nothing to lose, that experience is called as abiding in the truth. And when we abide in the truth, we are happy. Because happiness is our natural state. See? And that is why in deep sleep, 
why people snore because they are happy can you celebrate happiness in silence like you know somebody's marriage is there now the amuk so and getting married so let us observe two minute silence is it a condolence or what yes of course no hey like the waters natural flow is from higher to lower level fire naturally goes up to try to put the fire like it will go up is natural exactly the same way we are naturally divine we are naturally happy and therefore we want to go to sleep that is our natural state Hey friends so what is happening instead of recognizing our natural happy state we are struggling to become happy rather than being happy and for that becoming happy we see so many things <coughs> now what is the reason take an example <coughs> a young boy properly educated fat salary good health no problem complete freedom to move anywhere in the world one day a virus attacks him and he starts thinking what a life without a wife and thereafter he gets married Now, why did he think what a life without a wife? Because he was not at peace with himself. And then he gets married for what? Be attentive. Nobody gets married to become miserable. Has anybody ever thought, "Hey, I want to get married so that I can become miserable"? No. Everybody wants to get married to become happy, but exactly opposite happens, isn't it? nobody has ever become happy because of marriage and then okay i will divorce what for again for happiness so all our life is only a struggle we are seeking happiness don't seek happiness discover happiness and that happiness we can discover only if we can analyze properly and learn from our own experiences that happiness is our natural state we don't have to seek happiness we have to discover happiness see you can get this anywhere any time it is so simple one of my friend a retired brigadier from military in india i happened to go to delhi and uh, he knew i am coming he noon time maybe 12 12:30 flight so he says swami ji i'll come to see you on the airport evening i cannot come because of driving problem so i'll come i said come anywhere no problem i came out with my bag and all that and he was waiting with a nice garland and all that and he hugged and he said swami ji i am i had to tell you the best news of my life I said, "Are you getting again married or what?" He said, "No, no, 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 no." Then, could you imagine what he told? He said, "I have given up smoking." I said, "What is great about it?" He said, "Great about it. I have been smoking for sixty years. He was old, eighty years of man. He said, right from the age of seventeen, eighteen, I am smoking. So many years I have been smoking. Now I have given up smoking." He is the best news of my life. I said, very good. Now my life is, I have to learn from everything. That is my spiritual practice. Learn from everything. With every experience, if you learn, you grow wise. He said, what is there to learn? I said, now you have got data. I want to use your data to learn. 
See, I don't have to drink and uh, become an addict. People are doing experiment for me. I learn from them. <laughs> they are my guinea pigs. Why should I do that? Wise people learn from the experiences of others. Otherwise, people don't learn even from their own experience. I said, tell me, 60 years you have been smoking. You had happiness, is it not? Of course. Now, that is one unit of happiness for our calculation. One unit of happiness, 60 years of smoking cigarette. Now, you are given up smoking. Now, tell me, this happiness and that happiness, is it comparable? He said, no way. This happiness is million times more than the happiness that I had when I was smoking. What we have to learn? Learning is happiness in indulgence is inferior than the happiness in sacrifice or renunciation. Give it a try. Suppose you are addicted to something. Give it up and see the joy. Initially, your mind will react. But don't yield. No means no. See? In short, when we are thus discovering freedom from the impact of Prakriti, we are untouched by this. Attachment is an illusion. There is nothing like attachment. In the height of foolishness is attachment. See? Are the eyes attached to the colors and forms? Is the nose attached to any particular smell? Are the ears attached to any particular sound? Is the mind attached to any particular thought? Are we attached to waking, dream, deep sleep and samadhi? They come and go. As easily we support the waking experience, that easily we support the dream experience, that easily we support the deep sleep experience, that easily we support the samadhi experience. All of them come and go. We are untouched. Attachment is an illusion. Friends, when we are thus convinced, then our vision changes. See? Now, what is the change in vision? <coughs> Be very attentive. <coughs> the space is outside the house. The space is inside the house. So, what is our understanding of this? Is the space inside the house or the house is inside the space? House is in the space. Space is not in the house. But then why we say like this thing? Because we are preoccupied with the walls. When the walls are pulled down, will the space go out of this house in search of another house? Because the house is in the space. First analysis. Second, air is outside. Air is inside us also, is it not? Air is outside, air is inside. If this inner and outer air, their continuities stopped, meaning do kumbhak, you know all kumbhak? Do kumbhak, how long? Half an hour. Net result, no question will come. <laughs> See? So, air is outside, air is inside. Therefore, the body is in the air, air is not in the body. Space is outside, 
space is inside the house. Therefore, the house is in the space in the same manner. The air is outside and air is inside. Therefore, the body is in the air. See, if the air goes out of the body and forgot to come back, then death. Therefore, what is the reality? Air is the reality or the body is the reality. Next step. You are seeing me. I can't say you are hearing me. Because there is subjective. You are seeing me. Where I am, I am outside. Where the knowledge is happening? Is the knowledge happening where I am seated? Or the knowledge is happening inside you? Knowledge is happening inside you. Therefore, the mind where knowledge is happening, the knowledge is inside and the object of knowledge is outside. Therefore, the mind is both inside as well as outside. And therefore, the body and the life, and the life they are in the mind. <coughs> so, expand now. We have discarded the body. We have come to the prana. We have discarded the prana. We have come to the mind. Therefore, if we mind our mind, the body will not be a problem for us. But what happens? Instead of minding the mind, we mind the body all the time. No other theme other than body, body, body. Okay? And then we complain about the mind. Oh, mind is very disturbed. I try to control the mind, but the mind doesn't get control. Con uh, complaining about the mind is not spiritual life. Work on the mind to transcend the mind, to go beyond the mind. Mind is not an, uh, uh, a liability, it is an asset. See? Provided we can learn this thing properly. Nobody can help us. See? Mind is knowledge, consciousness is knowledge. Knowledge with thoughts is mind. Knowledge without thoughts is consciousness. That knowledge where the knower is born is mind. That knowledge where knower is not born is consciousness. That experience where experiencer is born is samsar, the world. That experience where experiencer is not born is the truth. In being, there are no problems. In becoming, there are no solutions. Only problem. So the spiritual life is stop becoming and just be. Okay? Man is being. Son is becoming with reference to father. Husband is becoming with reference to wife. Father is becoming with reference to son. These three guys, the son, the husband and the father, they are most miserable. Man is happy. So these three persons, son, husband and father, have they come out of this man? Where are they? In the deep sleep when we are snoring away, that time, where is the father, where is the husband, where is the son? Nowhere. 
because they never existed. These non-existing entities are miserable. How can you help them? Show the husband separating from the man. Oh, this is husband, this is man. How important it is the day we recognize this truth, life is a great celebration, not a calibration. Now, if I chant the Lord's name, what will I get? You get nothing. Then why should I chant? Don't chant. Who needs? Let us not have that uh, all the time attitude, what will I get? You get nothing, I tell you. And in fact, when you want nothing, you get everything. Merge in the infinite. That is the fulfillment in life. And that infinite merging is called as in Bhagavad Gita, Etat Buddha Buddhi Manchat Krutta Krutta Bharata. Nothing has to be done. Understand, learn from your every experience. Normally what we do, we take that poor guru, put him in the frame, hang him, sacrificing like a, um, what you call, crucifixion on the wall. You be there, don't come down. And we don't want to learn from our experience. Be very attentive. Food is in the plate. Where is the hunger? In the plate? Hunger is in the stomach. So that food must go in the stomach. Then only hunger will disappear. In the same manner. Where are the problems? Problems are in the mind. Where is the guru? Outside. Problems will remain. When that guru enters our mind, meaning when we are able to learn from every experience of our life, that ability to learn from one's own experience is arrival of our Guru in our heart. Guru is one. So many disciples. Why everybody is not benefited? Because most of them keep the Guru outside. Don't come inside, okay? Hang there. Don't come inside. Let him get in. And then we start learning. See, in... Bhagavat Mahapurana, there was a great saint, Bhagavan Dattatreya. He was asked, how come you have nothing? No kingdom, no army, no uh, property, no family, no nothing. How come you are so happy? He said, therefore I am happy. See? And then he was asked, who is your guru? And he said, I don't have one guru, I got two dozen gurus. And what every guru taught you, nobody taught me anything. I all learned. And then he gives the list of 24 gurus. And only for one, I'll tell you, for our understanding, I learned from the space. So space is my guru. What do you learn? I learned space supports everything, rejects nothing, but doesn't get influenced by anything. Work on this. Do we have to do anything? Vision supports all colors and forms. Reject nothing, but don't get influenced by anything. Is it not our natural state? Good thoughts are supported by the same mind. Bad thoughts are supported by the same mind. Mind is not influenced by them. Our nose supports the bad smell, the good smell. Nose is not affected. We support waking and dream, something present, deep sleep and samadhi, samadhi, everything absent. Are we influenced? Do we gain anything in the waking and the dream? Do we lose anything in deep sleep and samadhi?
now in this journey and in this destination who was our company and what was the destination so we are our company and we are our destination there is no other so what is the best company in life your own being creepers cannot grow in the desert they require support therefore we told you <coughs> if we are at peace with ourselves we are at peace with the whole world if we are at war with ourselves we cannot be happy how simple it is not difficult at all <coughs> so we'll conclude in 5 minutes you do what we are telling you whatever we are you are sitting is perfectly all right now for next 2 minutes do not talk to yourself this experiment you are doing <coughs> let us add one more parameter not only do not talk to yourself but listen to silence when we do not talk to ourselves <coughs> mind does not fall to words sounds are not produced and when we listen to silence sounds do not disturb us net result we are neither creating the sounds nor getting influenced by the sounds this eternal presence is what we are
take a deep breath two three times move your toes and fingers offer everything at the feet of your guru Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om